Wag one guys. So I created this flyer some while ago with Pixel Lab and I posted this on Instagram. Some of you were asking me for the tutorial, so I made a short video. I posted it on Instagram Reels, also on YouTube Shorts. And then people kept on asking for the complete tutorial. So in today's video, I'm going to show you the whole process of how I made this flyer with Pixel Lab. So stay tuned in order not to miss anything. Welcome to the world of creativity. Firstly, I selected a white background. Once I was done with that, I didn't want the background to be a plain white one, so I imported this image and cut a background from it. So I just used the pixel up crop to, to cut a square shape out of it. Here, this is our shape. Now, you have to increase the width and the height of the shape to make it complete the whole canvas use the relative position tool to make sure it aligns perfectly to the center then i locked my layers and used the color filter to to adjust and tweak the color of the shape till i got the color i actually wanted which was green After that, I imported the whole way transparent image. Then I increased the size to make it fit exactly how I wanted it to be. I also used the relative position tool and the position tool to make sure it aligns according to the way I want it to be. As you can see, the image is red. But what I want is a green image. So I lock the layer first. Then I use the color filter tool to adjust the color till I got green. Now, the next thing was to import the image of the people. So I did that and I actually tweaked the image a bit too because it was not actually fitting well with the background color that I needed. So I used the color filter to, to increase the saturation and decrease the hue a bit. Then I looked at my design and realized that something was missing that made it look less realistic. And that was shadows. So I decided to add shadows. To get the best results for these shadows, I could not use Pixel Lab, so I had to use Photo Room. Here, I imported the same image that I had just placed on Pixel Lab and removed the background, even if it had no background. Then I tapped on Transparent and blurred the whole image. So if you don't know how to do this, you can check my shots on YouTube. I have a tutorial for that there. Although the kind of blur we'll be using for this one is the Gaussian blur not the motion blur so i just increased it to about 50 percent and i saved it once this was done i headed back to pixel lab to continue my design so now i imported the image i had just blurred with photo room i had to make sure that the image was the exact opposite of the first image so i rotated it then i added color to it i had to add a black color so that the shadow would look more realistic so i placed the shadow below them then i tried to adjust it but it was not still looking nice so i increased the size and tried again still the same i haven't tried entering the size by myself but i was not still okay with what i had so I had to try another thing. Then I decided to use the 3D Rotate tool. So I used the 3D Rotate tool and it was kind of giving me the actual vibe that I wanted. And immediately I finished placing it, I used the Opacity tool to reduce the opacity of the shadows. It was kind of hard for me to determine if the opacity was enough or it wasn't but I just had to give it up at some point. And when I was done placing the shadows, I used the position tool to make sure it's aligned properly. After this, I sent the layer of the shadows to the back of the layer of the people. Then I locked them both. For the next process, I had to hide the layer of the people and the shadow so that it will not cause any distraction. Then I imported the transparent cutting. 
The curtain was red, so I had to repeat the process of what I did earlier to make it green. Once that process was done, it was time to place the curtain on the wall of the hallway. It was then that I realized that the curtain was too small, so I had to adjust it manually to make it fit. I had to make sure that there was space under so that it would not mess with the next process. But before I moved on to the next process, I first of all aligned the curtain to the middle of the canvas. After that, I made a copy of the curtain and aligned to the same position. The reason why I aligned the first curtain to the position, it was to make the alignment easier. Then I used the selection tool to select both curtains and use the move tool to move them down at the same time. Move them up rather. Then I move the layer of both curtains to the back of the hallway. After that, I imported this element. Let's just call it green light. So green light is already green, so there is no reason to tweak it or adjust the colors. I just adjusted the size and placed it at the empty space that I left before below the curtain. Then I sent the green light layer to the back of the layer of both the people and the shadow. Now you may ask yourself what the essence of the green light was. If you look at the body of the people, you are going to see that there is a reflection of green light on their body. <laughs> what did you expect? Of course, I'm the creative freak for a reason. The next thing was to import the coins. The coins were yellow or kind of gold, so I had to tweak the color to match the color of the brand. You know the vibe now, the design must make sense if I handle it. Just in case you are wondering how I got the blow on the coin, I got it with photo room, the same way we got the blow on the shadows. Then I just placed them randomly on the design. The funny thing is, as a beginner in graphic design, I used to think there was an actual way of placing these things. But there is no actual way, it's just randomly. Just make sure it makes sense and does not disturb the whole essence of the design. So when I was done with that, I just locked the layers and added a new text layer. Then I edited the text to welcome to April. At the time of making this tutorial, I could not remember the actual month I made this for, so I just used April. When I was done, I changed the color of the text to white. Then I changed the font to month because it was the brand font. I then changed the text alignment settings to center alignment. Then I kept resizing the text till I got the size I wanted. And when I finally did, I sent the layer of the text to between the two curtains. Then I selected the curtain that was at the front of the text layer and I used the erase color tool to increase its tolerance, thereby reducing its transparency. The essence of this is to make the text blend. When you are done with this and you notice that it hasn't still blend, you can use the opacity tool to reduce the opacity in order to make it blend. You look at it now, you see that it is blending.
after this process you can unlock your text layer and move it around the coating however you want you will notice that it still blends for the final process i just added the brand logo and its contact details which i already saved as png so it was kind of easy i just had to increase the size to make it fit or at least i thought i just had to increase the size Until... till i realized that it was not contrasting well with the background so i had to use the max tool to cut out some parts so i enabled mask and set the bezel mode to in Then I made a copy of the image and since mask was already enabled for the first image I just had to set the mask mode of the second to out. I made sure that the original layer was selected and enabled color for it. Since it's a green brand I just had to find a green that resonates with the normal color. Once I was done with everything, I just had to save my image. This was the final result. So don't forget to like, share and subscribe if you are new here because I'll be sharing in my next video how I enhance this flyer using Lightroom. So that's how it is done. If you like that video, don't forget to follow for more.